think I got it now. <laughs> Hi, I'm Carlene. I have a new life in Christ. I'm recovering from codependency, depression, isolation, guilt, and shame. Before recovery in Christ, I was completely broken. I had no hope and had isolated myself from my friends, family, and God. My marriage was failing. I had become codependent, not that I knew what that was at the time. I was the emotionally weak partner, which led to enablement of sin and weak boundaries. I had sacrificed my own identity in order to feel safe in the relationship. I carried so much resentment for my spouse. My entire life revolved around the dysfunction of my marital relationship to the point that it had become an idol to me. Fixing my relationship consumed every second of my thoughts. After many years of living just trying to survive from one day to the next, it started affecting me physically. I was almost completely disabled from all the physical issues I was having, for which there were no medical explanations. I had given up on life, lost all sense of myself, had no joy or purpose, and felt totally alone even when surrounded by people. I thought about suicide almost daily and tried to escape my feelings of worthlessness with many things from food and sleep to alcohol and pain pills. There were times that I had reached out for help only to feel more vulnerable and misunderstood, which only deepened my hopelessness. Eventually, I pulled away from involvement in my church until I wasn't involved at all and had completely stopped attending. In fact, I avoided any contact with church or anyone I thought might be churchy. I had prayed so hard, fought so long, yet nothing changed. I felt unheard and abandoned by God. Eventually, I couldn't even stand to see or hear his word or accept any encouragement. I wanted no one to even pray for me. I saw God as a condemning father who constantly pointed his finger and shook his head at me in shame and disgust. My dad and a few others at FCC started the Regen program at a nearby church a few years ago. I work with my dad, so I heard about the program almost on a daily basis. Thank you, Dad. And was encouraged to come for probably a couple of years before I gave in. One day on the way home, or on the way to work from a doctor's appointment, I decided I was making a detour home taking as many pills as I could find, drinking a few, and going to bed, hopefully not to wake up. I knew if I didn't reach out for help one last time, I was going to die, and my children would be motherless. Psalm 34, 18 says, The Lord is near to the brokenhearted and saves the crushed in spirit. I came to recovery seeking a fix for my circumstances, my failing marriage, and relief from my pain. It was my last attempt to reach out for help. I feared being misunderstood yet again. I was afraid of rejection. I was afraid of my sinfulness and my failures being known, as I had grown up in this very church and knew many of the people who attended, let alone that my parents are very faithful here and involved. The first few weeks at Regen were awkward and scary. Step one, admit, was no issue for me as I'd already experienced the truth of being completely powerless over my addictions, brokenness, and sinful patterns, and that my life was unmanageable on my own. I expected this attempt to fail, just like all the others. But I was met with compassion and found so many real people. Sorry. Um... I found many real people who had come to Regen out of desperation, just like me. <clears throat> um, I was met with compassion. And when I hear, heard the testimonies of others' healing experiences, I felt that maybe I could find healing as well. I had believed that healing was not possible as long as I was in this flesh. But God started revealing his truth and opened my eyes to the lies that I had believed for so long. 
I began to learn how he sees me as his creation in his image and covered in the sinless blood of Christ. I came to find that the condemnation, guilt, and shame I continually felt from the failure to live up to my own expectations came from Satan. Before Regen, the vision I had of who I should be, how I should feel and act, and what my life should look like had been the heavy chains around my neck, the shackles on my wrist, and the cinder blocks tied to my ankles. I could never attain the perfection I thought I had to be or do. I had grown up thinking that my depressive feelings were wrong, and being a Christian, I shouldn't have them, so there must be something wrong with me. I began resisting my feelings at a young age, and I hid them away, fearing I would be looked at as outcast or viewed as troubled. That's when I began isolating and feeling alone. I began struggling hard with depression. I resisted myself and my feelings, but they didn't go away. Instead, they multiplied over time. Instead of having compassion on myself, I grew to hate myself even more. I became involved in drugs and self-harm. During Regen, I came to find that my issues had been rooting in, rooted in trusting and believing who Satan said I was over what God said. I also found that I had misunderstood God, believing that I had to follow a set of rules to be accepted. Through Regen, I've learned to allow myself to feel. Feelings are okay and are there for a purpose. To meet myself with compassion and ask myself questions to get down to the root of things. This has allowed me to find the cause of my struggles and not just deal with symptoms or coping mechanisms that I use to drown out my feelings and try to escape my pain. Though I was unable to save my marriage, I was able to process past hurts as Christ began to heal my heart. With God's help, I could forgive the hurts that had been done to me as I began, began to understand my own nature. Titus 3, 3-6 three through six says, For we ourselves were once foolish, disobedient, led astray, slaves to various passions and pleasures, passing our days in malice and envy, hated by others and hating one another. But when the goodness and loving kindness of God our Savior appeared, he saved us, not because of works done by us in righteousness, but according to his own mercy, by the washing of regeneration and renewal of the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out on us richly through Jesus Christ our Savior. Now I can worship again. I can sing again. And though I still struggle with some health issues, I can see noticeable improvement from when I began this process. I'm able to feel peace and comfort and trust in that God knows me fully from beginning to end. Every sin I've ever committed and will commit, Jesus has already paid for. He is with me and never left. In coming to understand who he really is, I've been able to place my trust more fully in him with every circumstance in my life. I can see his goodness all around me. Romans 8.28 And we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. <clears throat> Before Regen, I had no boundaries and didn't even know what they were, which allowed others to continue hurting me deepening my depression and causing me to further isolate myself. I've now learned about healthy boundaries, enabling me to have more intimate relationships with some and limiting relationships with others. I can see that I crave to be known as each of us do and am known by my creator. I'm no longer afraid, no longer alone. My view is no longer death and doom under an angry God whose standards I cannot live up to but I'm continually being transformed by God's truth to carry out his beautiful plan, even in my trials. I'm aware of his work in me and his presence, even when I can't see or feel him there. None of this means I don't struggle anymore. I do, but for less, off, less often and for shorter amounts of time. Regen led me to more fully understand God's love and provided me the tools I need to have an intimate relationship with Christ, myself, and others. 
you will want to quit. And if you're like me, a lot. You'll have stalls. You'll get lost in the weeds. It'll hurt and be hard. But the freedom you'll receive is priceless, and I'm convinced God will do a great work in you. Philippians 1.6, And I'm sure of this, that he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of Jesus Christ. He is already beginning to work in you. So reach out. Don't quit. Don't quit. (laughs) Get back up. Continue. Take the right step. God is enough. 2 Corinthians 12, 9 says, My grace is sufficient for you, and my strength is made perfect in weakness. One of the most important things I've gained through this program is the friendships that have developed out of my small group. God has used them in my journey, just as he will use you. So I encourage you to be real, be open. It will build deep connections with others and prompt them to do the same. I urge you to pick at least two people in your group to maintain constant contact with, talk a few times a week, meet up for coffee, or just hang out. God will build real, authentic relationships that have likely been missing in your life, and that is key in this process. I'm so thankful for the work God is doing through the people in this program. I have no doubt that this is part of his plan in using evil for good and making ashes into something truly beautiful. Isaiah 61.3 says, The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me. Because the Lord has anointed me to bring good news to the poor, he has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to those who are bound, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to grant those who mourn in Zion to give them a beautiful headdress instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the garment of praise instead of a faint spirit, that they may be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified. They shall build up ancient ruins, they shall raise up the former devastations, and they shall repair the ruined cities, the devastations of many generations." Thank you. Carlene has worked very hard through Regen. This was the second time that she came through. Um, the first time she made it about halfway through and then had to stop because life became overwhelming with her daughter's accident and a bunch of other stuff that happened. But, but she had the courage to come back and to um, continue the work that God had begun in her. And... I just want to um, pray for Carlene now, and these are some of the other people in our group. We had more. They're not all here tonight, but we, we are beside you now, and we'll continue to be beside you as you go on from here. Heavenly Father, thank you for Carlene, for the work that you've done in her. Lord, I see her as an oak of righteousness like you. She mentioned in that prayer that she um, is learning to grow in her relationship with you and to depend on you for all of her relationships. Pray that you would um, continue to bless her and those that um, you bring into her life because of her trust in you. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you.